This is from my trip from London to Edinburgh. It's a train ride, four and a half hours. I never thought I would be saying the words English countryside um, and not be referring to a nursery rhyme. But as you can tell, this is really pretty. Um, there's, you know, the sea over the cliffs. And as you can see, these are sheep. It's just tiny white dots hanging out, uh, making us sweaters. Uh, appreciate the sacrifice sheep. This is uh, Edinburgh, Scotland, my first time in Scotland. I was expecting to see the Loch Ness Monster here at the station, uh, not gonna lie, but I saw the fringe as soon as I walked out of the station. There are going to be approximately 3,000, 7,000, 10,000, I don't know the final number of shows in this city over the next past over the next one month just poster after poster uh you know of, of dancing music comedy singing whatever you want and this is a group of people who have come out to sell their show at the square um to their dancing and singing on the streets like an enthusiastic flash mob of please buy tickets for our show and um this was my this is one of my favorite musicals called rent and uh, another group of people uh, selling the show, uh, singing my favorite song, No Day But Today. And even though I'm here for only two days, um, this was day one at Edinburgh. I will keep you guys in the loop for what happens tomorrow. I'm performing. So this was day two at the Edinburgh Fringe 2016, lovely blue sky. I decided to do the smart thing and consult the Fringe directory, which is a listing of every show that is happening at the Fringe. Again, just a million shows, um, lots of information. I realized I do not know how to read addresses um, and successively I do not know how to read maps uh, because I managed to get lost in a city that is essentially a grid. And uh, that, I believe, is my sheepish face um, not doing so well. Um, more posters, more posters as you can see. Uh, this is Showstopper right here. In fact, they came to India last year uh, with the Pajama Festival which was run by Veer Das and they did a phenomenal job. They improvised a Bollywood musical comedy. Um, and then these are more shows, so many faces, uh, so many names and so many little quotations, um, you know, s convincing you to come and watch their show. There was something really, really sort of desperate and awesome about it. Um, I really enjoyed watching this city, literally sort of posters everywhere. One of the most impressive things about Edinburgh, of course, was the architecture. Um, the city is, it's like walking in an old English novel. Um, and then, of course, I also chanced upon this shop, Jokes and Novelties. I was like, I have to go in and buy something really cheap and tacky um, that will not eat into my day's budget. Um, but I, I didn't get anything, but I'm still tacky. Um, I also saw a show, um, I ended up watching some theatre, uh, it's called Fabric, a play that actually left me seriously distraught. Um, I ended up calling my best friend and my mom and crying. Um, and then here's, here's more uh, just pretty, pretty, pretty buildings. This was the venue where I was performing uh, at the Fringe. It was for the BBC and uh, my producer Ed Morish had just done a phenomenal job of it. Um, as you can see the show was called um, what makes the world laugh and it was a free show uh, but it was sold out already uh, when we got there and um, you know uh, it was basically comics from all over the world and we were recording it for a radio show for BBC4 um, as you can tell it was raining because uh, UK uh, that seems to be the default setting this is apparently summer by the way uh, where everyone's dressed like we're all in Mumbai in the middle of monsoons um, it's summer right now. This was the green room and just what a host of amazing comics. There were comics from Romania, uh, American comics. That's Michelle Wolf actually. I'm a huge fan of her work. I did not say anything to her while because she was working. Like she was like, I'm doing my thing. You should not be sitting there on my head. Ended up chatting so with I a bunch got, of the I got comics. Some great advice from one of the comics on the lineup. That was, uh, fun. That was fun because I was so not on board. I quite like I quite like playing with a hostile audience. So it was good. What is your best tip for handling an audience that might not be on your side? Just to keep going, look them in the eye. What, like, d deliver your jokes directly to someone who is hating it and <gasps> find it funny. Well, the, I feel like, I don't know if your experience is like this, but the first gig is always... First gig is always kind of great. Like, you, my first gig was kind of fine. Like, I just did some jokes and people were very nice and I liked it and then I, so I went back. After that, it was like, when you 
are trying to get more gigs and you're trying to like the whole it's like the beginning is sort of fine it's the middle that's difficult <laughs> I think I think it's just trying to yeah. Uh, I think I went, I think my set went okay. Uh, I couldn't really hear because uh, it was being recorded for radio. So the feedback loop wasn't as sort of proficient uh, due to sound. But having said that, it was just what an experience. I was like, you know, even if I'm tanking, I'm tanking at the Edinburgh Fringe.